Welcome, friends! Today we're gonna talk about classic video game characters. And what makes a character a video game character is, well, that they've come from a video game. But for me at least, there's a handful of characters that aren't exactly video game characters, as they're from other properties that were originally established on other mediums, such as comic books or movies. But maybe my first exposure to these characters came from video games. Or maybe it's just that I've spent more time with these characters in a game than I have in another medium. But to me, these characters feel like true video game characters, even though they're actually from somewhere else. The first and the most classic game feeling to me is the Ninja Turtles. I wouldn't doubt it if my first exposure to the Turtles was through a video game. I mean, there were a lot of them, and they were all good too. Licensed properties didn't usually make for good games, but back in the day, every Turtles game was pretty good. Even that horribly flawed one on the NES that we still laugh about today. That was actually a really cool game back then. Especially for a child who's just playing a game just for the sake of it. I didn't even know what the point of this game was. I just thought it was cool that you could wander around the city and then the perspective would change when you go underground. And being able to swap characters whenever you want is kind of neat. But also, because I didn't know what the point of the game was, I also didn't know how dumb the RNG was for trying to actually play through it. Ignorance truly is bliss. But all the Turtles games are pretty good. And the good ones are really good. Turtles in Time and Tournament Fighters were the ones that I played a lot. And those old Turtles games were also made by Konami. So you already know. Now, the Ninja Turtles are of course originally comic book characters. But I don't think most people even associate them as that. The cartoon was way more popular, and most people associate them with that. I saw the show some, I also had the movies on VHS, and I watched those more than I ever watched the show. Because back then you couldn't just watch anything on TV at any time. I don't even remember when the Turtles show actually came on. It was probably only like once a week on a Saturday or something, and probably also overlapped with another show that I watched on a different channel. And that's if I was even lucky enough to be able to stay home and watch TV on a Saturday. So I didn't really watch the show a whole lot, but I did know about it. However, I played these games like a lot a lot. So for me, these are classic video game characters. And they're up there with the greats. We got Mario, Sonic, Bomberman, and the Ninja Turtles. Okay, so that other show that I was probably watching instead of the Turtles on another channel, it was probably Power Rangers. I knew every time that show was on, it was like built into my circadian rhythm. As like a seven or an eight year old, you kind of know internally when to do certain things, like when it's time to wake up or eat dinner or when Power Rangers is on. And if I'm in the vicinity of a television, I'm gonna put that shit on. I know the channel, I can operate any TV, let's get that on there. I don't care if we're at grandma's house, someone else's grandma's house, or at the doctor's office waiting room. I know when it's 4.30, and I know how to turn that thing on. I did watch a lot of TV growing up as a whole, but not really so much on a day-to-day -day basis. But I did watch Power Rangers every day if I could, and on Saturday morning if I wasn't out. Or even then, too, if I had access to a TV. But back then, you could only watch a show when it was on. Unless you had a tape of it. And of course you did. We all did. But my point here is that I would play the Power Rangers video games like all the time. And it's funny how the old side-scroller beat-em-ups follow the same narrative structure as the show. So it's almost like you're playing through an episode. And they're a lot of fun, too. The Power Rangers are really colorful as well. They make for great 16-bit sprites, and all the thunder and lightning is so hype. You turn one of these on, and even the title screen blasts you with more stimulation than you know what to do with. You ever watch a child play a video game while also running and jumping around the room? These are the sort of games that'll get you doing that. The Power Rangers games just make for great beat-em-ups, and I love beat-em-ups. Nothing quite has the same flair as the Power Rangers ones in that respect. First, we got the most metal-ass music, which translates extremely well as a 16-bit MIDI track. And then all the thunder and lightning, together with karate and giant robot dinosaurs, to battle an intergalactic space witch and her evil space aliens. It's like all of the most generic video game cliches all rolled up together. 
It's fucking great. So I played these games a lot. And I could play these games whenever I wanted to, unlike the show which was only on when it was on. And like, the Power Rangers were everything back then. The merchandise for Power Rangers went to whole new levels. I mean, they made Power Rangers everything. This is an actual photograph of my room as a seven-year-old. As you can see, we got the bag, all these wall decals, the weapon set, you know, the one where you can put them together. We got the complete armory. But you see that back there? That's a chair. So you can unironically sit on the Black Ranger. Which is the best one, by the way. Until the Green Ranger comes out. I mean, nobody touches the Green Ranger. It's not even a competition. But before that, Black Ranger the Goat. And that right there? That's a tent. We got a Power Rangers tent. And you can see the pillow right there on the bed. But we also had the sleeping bag and I've still got it, and the nightlight, and all the toys. I mean, they made Power Rangers everything. I remember these soaps that were in the shape of their masks, and they would change the color of the bath water to whatever color the ranger was, even macaroni and granola bars. So the Power Rangers are everything. It's a TV show, but it's also a movie, but it's also a comic book, and for me, it's also a video game. Now, the next lot that also fits the vibe of video game characters for me is the X-Men. My first exposure to X-Men was actually this VHS tape that we got from Pizza Hut. I've actually never read the X-Men comics, although I might like to. And I didn't really watch a whole lot of the show, although I did start watching it on TV after getting that promo tape. The X-Men are all really cool, and that 90s animation is great. The X-Men got a lot of video games, too, and they're all hit or miss, let's be honest. They're not all good, but the ones that are good are really cool, and the ones that are kinda bad are at least playable, but that arcade game smacks. The X-Men arcade is just as legendary as the Turtles in Time arcade game, and the design of the X-Men lends themselves really well as video game characters. The bright colors and their comic book art style translates nicely into 16-bit sprites. But also, their iconic powers are so specific and unique in a way that makes them functionally a video game character. At least all the main ones. Like the Cyclops eye beams Cyclops has the strongest power for a side-scroller beat-em-up. Or Wolverine with his claws and being able to climb on stuff. Even Gambit with his staff and throwing cards makes for a great video game character. It just fits the vibe. And another thing about back in the day, picking out a video game was like going in blind. All you really had to go off of was the cover art, which didn't really tell you anything. So you would often lean into choosing games that were properties you could recognize. So I ended up with a handful of X-Men games just because it was something that I knew about. And the X-Men are really cool. I never really engaged with any superheroes through comic books, which is their proper medium, but I have played a lot of superhero video games, and the X-Men translate the best as video game characters. For me, I see the classic X-Men also as classic video game characters. They even fit so well as video game characters that they've got crossovers with fighting games. I mean, we got X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and then Marvel vs. Capcom, but like, the vast majority of Marvel's roster in this game are all X-Men. Like a lot of them are. My favorite superhero game only has one of the X-Men in it, but like, this is peak 90s side-scroller action. And also Spider-Man is in this game. And Spider-Man is another one of those characters that just really fits as a video game character. And there's some crossover between Spider-Man and the X-Men, there's even that one game, Spider-Man and the X-Men Arcade's Revenge. It's alright, it's not super great or anything. A solid 7 out of 10 game. It's a really tough game for a child to play too. It wasn't one that I revisited very often, but I did have this one Spider-Man game on the Genesis, 
I actually played that one a lot. And Spider-Man, just like the X-Men, translates really well as a video game character. He's got a strong and iconic design, and he's got a lot of very unique and specified abilities. And Spider-Man, I think, even more so than other superheroes because of his mobility. And being able to move in different ways is a lot of fun. Like being able to crawl up walls or swing on the webs like vines. Even in the modern day Spider-Man games, that shit's really cool. And the coolest part is just traversing the world by web slinging. For me, Spider-Man is a classic video game character, even though he's a superhero. Even though he's really a comic book character. And I did watch that animated series. You know the one. That was my first exposure to Spider-Man. It's a fantastic show. But getting to see Spider-Man in a lot of great games helped me to build an appreciation for the character that I wouldn't otherwise have. And he's also in Marvel. The last superhero that I put on this list is Batman. Now I've never really been a huge fan of Batman. I wasn't really into Batman as a child, but I've grown to appreciate the character more and more as I've gotten older. And that's not really so surprising. I mean, Batman handles a lot more mature and complex themes, but Batman had a lot of great games too, and some of them were pretty cool. And some of them really weren't. Batman also translates really well as a video game character, kind of in the same way that Spider-Man does. He's got a really cool and iconic design, and he's got a lot of great iconic abilities, like the Batarang, and the grappling hook, and that car is really sick too. Batman just looks good on screen, pretty much no matter what the context is. But he's also got a lot of great tools that allow him to move through space in interesting ways, so he's fun to play as. I would say that superheroes in general translate nicely as video game characters, but that's not necessarily true. Batman, Spider-Man, and the X-Men really stand out as video game characters in a way that none of the other Marvel or DC superheroes really do. And it's not like other superheroes don't get good games, because they do, but it's like they just don't hit the same. And Batman makes for such a great game character that even in the modern day, we still see fantastic games featuring him. Like the Arkham series. Absolutely fantastic games. They need to give up on that Suicide Squad nonsense and bring this back. So for me, I see Batman as a classic video game character. Now the next character that I see this way is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is first and foremost a cartoon character, of course, but he makes for a great mascot. And mascot characters are great for making video games, because you can insert them into all sorts of different types of games. Most of the Mickey Mouse games are all platformers, but they are also all very different from each other. And surprisingly, there's also a certain amount of consistent quality when it comes to the Mickey Mouse games. I mean, they're all good enough. And then a handful of them are, like, really good. Like, some of these games are sleepers. And it seems like Mickey Mouse just keeps getting new games. And I feel like Kingdom Hearts also really helped to solidify Mickey Mouse as a video game character. But that epic Mickey game is alright. It's not Mario Odyssey, but it's pretty good. And they, like, just remastered it or something, so he's still getting new games even today. I played a lot of the Mickey Mouse games growing up, and I've even seen a lot of the old cartoons. And it's a little bit strange for me. It feels so surreal to see Mickey Mouse as this prolific baby show. And that's entirely and exclusively what he is now. It's like, that's just his permanent new identity. But for me, I will always see Mickey Mouse as a classic video game character. Now, there's another cartoon that translates exceptionally well as a video game, and that's Tiny Toons. I love Tiny Toons, and all the games are really good too. These characters and their colorful world are just perfect for a video game. The Tiny Toon Adventures game on the Genesis is probably my favorite. And you know what? Konami made these games too. And there's actually a lot of Tiny Toon games, and they're all good. Konami just makes good games. I mean, it is what it is. 
The Tiny Toon games are just really indicative of what 2D platformers were like at the time, and I feel like they're just as classic as the other great 2D platformers that we fondly revere from this era. And the Looney Tunes had a lot of video games too, but they don't quite hit the same as the Tiny Toons ones. I feel like Konami has a lot to do with it, because Konami didn't make the Looney Tunes games. The Looney Tunes games didn't have any kind of consistent quality, but also the Tiny Tunes have more colorful and simplified designs. They just fit the vibe a lot better. So I will always see the Tiny Tunes as classic video game characters. Now the last character that I want to talk about is Dracula. Okay, we all know that Dracula is not originally a video game character, but every hundred years he comes back. And let's be honest, Dracula makes every video game better. And there's other classic monsters that have also become staple enemies in video games. But Dracula stands out in a way that none of the other monsters really do. He's so iconic. It's the perfect template for when you just need to insert evil here. And it's hard to make a bad Dracula game. Believe me, they tried. In the 90s, they made these Bram Stoker's Dracula games based off of the movie. They made an active and conscious effort to make a bad licensed movie tie-in Dracula game, and somehow they're still fun. They're both absolutely epic and hilariously flawed at the same time. They're beloved in like the same way that unlicensed Chinese bootleg games are loved, and he's even the villain in this unlicensed Chinese bootleg Donkey Kong game. But Dracula is also the iconic villain of the Castlevania series, so he's right up there together with K. Rule, Ridley, and Bowser. Dracula could be in the next Smash game too, and it wouldn't even be weird. Like it would make sense. So for me, Dracula is a classic video game character, just like the rest of these. But what do you think? <laughs>